Hey guys, Multiclass Gamer here, and you wanted to see another Nickelodeon game? Well, you got it. This is the Fairly Odd Parents Breaking the Rules. Yeah, I know you guys probably wanted to see another SpongeBob game, but I decided to do something different this time. You know, that way I could bring you guys another Nickelodeon game, but it's not necessarily SpongeBob again, because I've already done like six SpongeBob games now. But, anyways, this game was released in November 2003, also for Xbox and PS2. I'm playing this on the GameCube version, however. <coughs> It was also released on the PC and G Game Boy Advance, but both those versions are have totally are completely different from each other and from the console versions. So just so you know, just make it very clear from the start. I'm playing this on the GameCube version, which is you know obviously one of the console versions. This game is developed by Blitz Games, who also developed Creature from the Krusty Krab. So that's another Blitz game I LP'd on this channel, and um, yeah, it's developed by Blitz Games and. Basically, yeah, they developed Creature from the Krusty Krab, they developed this game and other games based off cartoons and other IPs, but went defunct in 2013. And, uh, you can already tell I'm reading off notes right now. Um, so this game was also published by THQ, which is the same company that published, you know, pretty much a lot of the Nickelodeon games I've LP'd so far, like Barnyard, Spongebob, all the Spongebob games pretty much for the most part. Except for, I think even Operation Krabby Patty was published by THQ. Um, yeah, they declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2012. So basically, both the companies that made this game possible are pretty much gone by now. So that's very unfortunate. Let's uh, start a new game here. So anyways, uh, this is the second of only four video games based directly off the Fairly Odd Parents. And if you don't, that's if you don't count the four Nickelodeon crossover games. Time to get up, Crazy Lab. I didn't know Timmy had different heads. <sighs> Just another day or two. You have to get up, Timmy! We have to prepare! Timmy, we're leaving for our, uh, seminar weekend! Duty called! We certainly won't be having any fun this weekend! I'm a gatherer away this weekend. That means something important. Oh no! Mickey! He's here! My brain is numb with horror! You two go sour while I think of something! No can do, Timmy! You know we can't be seen by anyone but you! And balloon, see? This is no time for rules! I wish we'd have to follow those stupid rules! You got it! I'm betting this isn't good news. I'm betting this is really great news, but I'm not betting much. It says here that your wish broke the rules so badly that the next person to touch them will feel the wish power of the fairy stupid enough to grant such a silly wish! and you're nothing. Got it? I wish Ricky didn't have that book. Well, I wish you were still in bed asleep so I wouldn't have to deal with you and your freaky, disgusting habits. We're in trouble. Now we're in trouble in Timmy's dreams. Now we're spinning around in trouble in Timmy's dreams. Whee! This is serious business. It's only a matter of time before someone finds out what happens and we end up in fairy court. Yay! versus Cosmo and Wanda is in session. All right, Cosmo and Wanda, you have been accused of losing your copy of The Rules. How do you plead? I'll plead that way. Liam, can I deal? Silence! Any plea other than guilty will be met by loud shouting and a terrifying display of my muscle tone. So I think he means it. Jorgen von Strangle, you may begin the persecution. Thank you, Your Honor. I call to the stand little Timmy Turner. Timmy... Did your fairy godparents lose their copy of the rules? Yeah, but... He says yes! The court finds the accused guilty and sentences them to 49 and a half hours of impunity service to recover the missing copy of the rules or lose their fairy license forever! Um, what was the first choice again? Hand in your wands! And your backup wands! Now, tiny fairies, 
You can take these training ones and get out of my sight. 49 and a half hours? We'll never complete the impunity service in that time. Not without our real wand. Not with that attitude. Come on, guys. We can do this. And I can do this. Ta-da! It's going to be a long 49 and a half hours. Training wand six. Timmy, if we're to recover all of the pages on the rules, we really need your help. What do I have to do? Um, pretty much everything. But don't worry. We can help teach you the basics. You can use the control stick to move around and the C-stick to look around. Just remember, if you get stuck or you're not certain or you see something interesting, talk to us and we'll be there with some advice. Talk to us lots. Besides useful advice, we can give you all sorts of fashion tips. Try it now! And so it begins our 49 and a half hours of impunity service. And we cannot move until we press R to talk to our, to our godparents. Every time you press R in this game, it's going to make Cosmo want to appear and give you some tips. So let's try it. Well done. You're so cool. Let's move to the next part of the training, hon. But talk to us again first. Okay, we got to do it again. And literally, you cannot move. I don't know why they make you do it twice, but I guess they really got to hammer in that you can press the R button and talk to your godparents. If the universe is giving you a bad point of view, it can be mean like that. You can adjust your view. You can press an L button. Now we can finally move around. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering what my history with this show is. Well, here's the thing. This is the only game, the only video game based off the Fairly Odd Parents that I had growing up. And now as far as the show goes itself, um, I had two, I had... I had a top three favorite uh, Nickelodeon shows growing up, and this was number two behind Spongebob. And you guys know how much I love Spongebob based off the fact that I already LP'd six games based off the show. You can't jump high enough. You can jump twice to do a double jump, Pumpkin. It's twice as much fun and only two-thirds the calories. Only two-thirds the calories, yeah. So it's pretty obvious that the people who made this show did actually, you know, watch the show. So it's very clear that they know, that they know their source material. So anyways, we're going to have these platforms appear here, and we're going to do some platforming. Be careful on these narrow you have to get across and press that big red button. What happens if I fall off? You'll move downwards really fast. It'll be fun. Uh, until you hit the ground, that is. You know, for a platformer, this game is, it's all right. You know, it's well designed for the most part. And... Playgrounds will come in handy. They'll give us a little more magic. When we have a hundred, we get enough magic to give you another attempt at a task. If you fail the first time. Like in video games when you get a one-up? That's about the size of it. Yep, they're literally just coins from the Mario universe. You know, you collect 100 of them, you get a 1-up. You get a life. So that's just how these work. So you just collect as many as, many as you can whenever you see them. Um, but yeah, platforming is decent in this game. But that being said, this game was not well received by critics. In fact, IGN gave it a 5 out of 10. So yeah, critics were not, critics were not very, you know, pleased with this game when it came out. So anyways, I got a button here. These buttons are very, very flashy, and, you, and they just make you want to press them. So. There you go, just press it. And I'll let you do something special, like move on, per se. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, I had a top three list of favorite... Oh. Yeah, sometimes they appear, like, way too often. You don't even have to, like, sneak up. You just need to... Oh. Like, even if he does wake up, it doesn't matter. Like, he literally just sits there. I guess green aliens can hear me. You better get off of that plant and escape, honey! You've got no escaping to do though, because literally, like he won't chase after you. He won't move. That's Mark Chain, by the way, from the show. It's an alien. All right, so let's take the flower up. Now, including this, this tutorial level we are on, with, there are a total of ten Did levels in the game. Oh, but this surface looks awfully slippery. It'll be fun unless you fall off. So we got ourselves some introduction to ice physics. There will be plenty of that in this game. So just be careful, and you'll be good to go. Yeah, like I said, it's a typical 3D platformer. Nothing much to say. Those pointy things look familiar. They're wish stars, Han. Remember? So if I get them, I can make a wish? Sure thing, Timmy. But first, you need five stars. Then you have to stand on a special wishing circle. Is that right? You do remember, Cosmo. I always said you're not just a pretty face. I'm also a pretty body. So basically, these wish stars are the main collectibles of the game. And for all five, for every five of these wish stars you collect, you get a page of the rules back. Um, most levels have either ten or fifteen wish stars. 
Yeah, the game likes to hammer in how much, how many wish stars you have left. It's obvious it was not, obviously not meant for gamers my age, but still, it's just, uh, this is a game I grew up, I grew up playing, so obviously there is a nostalgia factor to it, no matter, no matter the quality of the game, I still enjoy it to a certain extent, because it makes me feel like I was, like I'm, you know, like I'm, like, I was like eight years old when this game came out, but I think I started playing, like, when I was nine or ten, you know, Timmy's age, so obviously... It fit well with my age, and I enjoyed it when I was little, but I honestly, I didn't beat it until like 2015. But there we go, we just got two more wish stars to get. Obviously, collecting the stars in this game is not as appealing as collecting the stars in Super Mario 64. You can make a wish, and in return for a job well done, we get a page of the rules. It's price to find a regular wishing, and when we get all the pages back, they'll restore our full fairy wishing powers. Okay, and right here we have the secondary collectible of the game, Crimson Chin Cards. Whoa! A Crimson Chin Card? They're super rare. I prefer the medium rare. <laughs> oh, Cosmo. Alright, so like I said, like they said, we get a wish for every five stars we collect. What happens now that I have five stars? You can make a wish! We can't do really big wishes, but we will be able to help! I like helping, and I like extra helping! What should I wish now? You can undo Vicky's wish for starters! Great idea! I wish I was awake! That ends the tutorial level, alright. Yes, we're gonna save our progress here. Oh, September 8, 2015. Okay, so that was the file where I actually beat the game, by the way. This file right here. Last time I played, this was... And that was also the last time I played this game. So, yeah. Over two years ago. Jeez. Okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a new file here. I love games that actually keep a date... Like, keep the date on the last time you saved the game. Because then I get to know, like, which... When was the last time I played this game? And for me, it was the day before my 20th birthday. Now I'm 22. So there are a total of 33 Crimson Chin cards in the entire game. I believe there's like three or four of them in each level. And uh, actually, I believe there's three total in each level. No, I'm pretty sure there's like four in some. I don't know. Either way, we are now in the hub world of the game, which is uh, first, well, you only have access to Timmy's room starting off, but eventually this is this bathroom door will open after you complete two levels. Um, after you complete three levels, this door will open, allowing you access to downstairs where there's more levels. and. You go go from there. There's basically eight levels, uh, eight normal levels in the final boss of the game. The first level I'm going to take on, starting next episode, is Chinless Blunder. That is this one right here. You go here to select it. There, there's another level you can select is a uh, Batch Too Far or a Vicky Virus. Now, at all eight of these levels in the game are based off episodes of the show, and I'll be pointing them out as I enter them. Um, so other than that, I don't really have much else to say for this first episode, but just that. Um, in the 90s and 2000s, Nickelodeon was in its prime, and this was basically the early 2000s for me. It was this show, SpongeBob SquarePants, and my third favorite show was Jimmy Neutron. But I didn't have any... Unfortunately, growing up, I never had any games based off the Jimmy Neutron series, so... If I ever get any shows based off that, or any... Sorry, any games based off that, I'll probably play it. Um, I guess it's also worth knowing that uh, about a year after this game was released, actually less than a year, there was a sequel called uh, Shadow Showdown, you know, I never had that game, but I saw advertisements for it when, around the time it was released. And this game came out around the same time as Val from King Bottom, so... Okay, so that's enough to, enough telling you guys facts. I'm sure you don't care for that. You just want to see me play the game. And we will continue on in the next episode, starting with Chinless Blunder. Hope you guys are looking forward to this Let's Play as much as I am, because it'll be very interesting to see, first of all, how many episodes it takes me to beat this, and also if I can complete it just like I did before. Because uh, in my original file, I did get all the Crimson Chin cards, but I don't remember, I don't think it did anything really. It's supposed to like unlet, unlock like eight secret clips or something on the menu screen, but I don't know, maybe I just didn't know the difference or something. Alright, see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.